Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. When I say the jal, a certain image comes to your mind. A man that is blind with one eye, right? Well, the jal has many faces. And this is what I want to show you today. And I will talk more about these many faces of the jal as time goes by, inshallah, if Allah wills. And if it, inshallah, Allah gives me more insight, inshallah. I want to start with the hadith of Tamim al-Darmi. How does he describe the jal compared to the one-eyed man the Prophet told us about? So let us continue in studying this hadith about the man that Tamim al-Darmi. So, he says, Hatta dakhalna. And you know when that animal, Jassasa, who was long-haired, and he said, go over there. And they went over there, and they met with Dijjal. This is what the Prophet confirmed, that he met with Dijjal. Listen to him. In fact, when he comes, he, it says in the Arabic language, Hatta idha dakhalna dayra. We came into the monastery. We came into the monastery. فَإِذَا فِيهِ And in that monastery was a man, أَعْذَمُ insan, A huge person. رَأَيْنَاهُ We all saw him. قَطْعٌ Absolutely خَلْقًا Absolute in creation. He was a giant. He was big. He was humongous in his creation. And so the Prophet ﷺ, you know, what's interesting is that before Tamim Adarmi describes this, the Prophet said ﷺ about him, when did he accept Islam? Uh, Tamim Adari, he accepted Islam after the book. He was in the last portion of Islam, he accepted Islam. And so when everyone's, you know, coming into Islam, one of the people, and it is towards the end of his life that he was talking about the Jal. Okay, and so here is a man who was a Christian, knew about the message of the Prophet, but now he had this experience, and he comes to the Prophet Wasallam that we went with 30 people, and I met the Jal, and the Prophet says Wasallam about what he said. Haddathani hadithan. He said something, he said things to me. He said to me that things that are in agreement with the things I told you about the Jal. But when you look at it from a surface level, there seems to be a contradiction. Because over here, Tamim Adarmi, the way he, Tamim Adari, the way he describes the Jal, he says, Hatta idha dakhalna dayr, fa idha ra'fihi a'adhamu al-insan, was a huge well-built person. رَأَيْنَاهُ قَطْعًا خَلْقًا We have never seen anyone with his type of built, his type of strength. Okay? And in another hadith, by the way, uh, I will show that to you one day, it, uh, it, he's mentioned as an old man. Okay? And so now let's look at another saying of the Prophet that we are a little bit more familiar with. The Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, مَا بَعَثَ اللَّهُ مِن نَبِيٍ إِلَّا أَنْذَرَ إِلَّا أَنْذَرَ قَوْمَهُ أَعْوَرَ الْكَذَّابِ The Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah did not send any Prophet except that they warned their people about the one-eyed liar. إِنَّهُ عَيُورَ because, إِنَّهُ أَعْوَرَ Because he is one-eyed. وَإِنَّ رَبَّكُمْ لَيْسَ بِنْ أَعْوَرَ And because Allah is not one-eyed. مَكْتُوبٌ بَيْنَ عَيْنَيْهِ كَافِرٌ And it is written between his two eyes that he is a kafir. In another narration, the Prophet said وسلم, about him, قَصِيرٌ He will be short. Short. أَفْحَجُ And he will be, you know, his legs will be like this. You know, he will walk like this. Okay? His legs will not be, his feet will not be normal. They will be crooked. Okay? Afhaju. Ja'dun. He will have wool haired. Okay, actually, let me just show this to you. So, this is wool haired. Okay? So, this is the type of hair he will have according to some narrations 
of the Prophet Okay, and he will be hen-toed, so his feet will be not really straight, like that, like this baby over here. Okay, so he'll be something like this. Okay, so over here, Tamim al-Dari, he says, فَإِذَا فِيهِ أَعْذَمُ الْإِنسَانِ And it was a humongous person. رَأَيْنَاهُ قَطْعًا خَلْقًا We have never seen a person of such a strong creation. This is what he says. And the Prophet describes him as one-eyed. The Prophet describes him as short. The Prophet describes him as having wool hair. And then, you know, there is a third uh, you can say description of Dajjal, which is Ibn Sayyad. His name was Saf. Saf. Saf is what his parents called him. The Prophet had told his companions that their Dajjal would be born and the parents would not have a child for a long time. When he would be born, he would have one eye. The mother would be wide and have long hair and long hands and the father would be very skinny. And so they knew the Jewish community then such a child was born. He was born and he grew up very, very quickly. He was not born in the beginning of Medina, but within like a few years, he became like a banuq. He became like a big child. And they say that, you know, in the hadith of, uh, in the Sahih Sitta, it's mentioned that he would sleep, but his heart would not sleep, like the prophets. Okay. And so the, pro the companions of the prophet used to swear that he is the jab used to swear, Umar bin Khattab sweared in front of the Messenger of Allah, Wallahi, he's the Jab. Uh, Jafar, radiallahu anh, he swore that he's the Jab. Many companions, the majority of the, you know, in our times, we have the hadith of Tamim al-Dari is in the front, and the, and the, the narrations of Ibn Sayyid are in the back of our mind. But in this in time of the Sahaba, it was the opposite. They were very worried because the Prophet was worried to the point that he was going there trying to listen to what is his deal, right? And they would hear him mum mumbling things. And he's the one that told Abu Bakr that I sleep. Or his mother said to him, he sleeps but his heart doesn't sleep. Just like the Prophets. Anyway, the point here is that you have one description of the Dajjal as being short, another description of being well built, and then you have Ibn Sayyad. Okay, and so you have different phases of this phenomenon called Dajjal. Okay, let me share one of them with you that you will find interesting. So, because many companions considered uh, Ibn Sayyad to be Dajjal, so he said he's now arguing with, you know, because they were like a little weary, right? Uh, in fact, I will uh, go to the beginning of this narration a little bit, okay? And uh, so, uh, you know, there's a companion of the Prophet, I'll read it, oh, Sa'id, oh, Abu Sa'id. Uh, actually, let me just go in even before this. I was accompanied by Ibn Sa'ad. Abu Sa'id, radiallahu anh, mentions this hadith. Ibn Sa'id was considered a Dajjal amongst the companions of the Prophet. So, I was accompanied by Ibn Sa'id after performing Hajj or Umrah. People departed and he and I were left. So now he's with this guy that many of the companions, all of the companions were thinking of the Dajjal. I was alone with him. I trembled and felt frightened because of what the people were saying about him. Now people here, who are the people? The people is the Sahaba. Okay. مِمَّا يَقُولُ النَّاسِ فِيهِ What people, Nas here is the Sahaba. Okay. And I trembled and fright, frightened of him because of what the people were saying about him. When I halted to see him, put your put your belongings near that tree. When I halted, I said to him, put your belongings near that tree. He saw a sheep, took it out, uh, took out a cup, and uh, he took out a cup from his luggage and went to milk the cow, the sheep. Okay. He saw a sheep, took out a cup, and went to milk it. Then he came to me with some milk and said to me, Drink, Abu Sa'id. Now here's a person you think is Dajjal, and he's going to give you milk. You know, you're going to be like, Okay, I don't really want to do this. Drink, Abu Sa'id. But I loathed drinking anything from his hand because of what the people were saying about him. 
so so then what does he say? He makes up an excuse, the Sahabi, right? So I verily it is a hot it's really hot today, you know. And I would not like to drink milk because drink is uh, milk is also hot in its nature. Okay, so he said to me, Abu, Abu Sa'id, I, I think I should take a rope, tie it to the tree, and hang myself because of what the people are saying about me. You feel sorry for him here, don't you? Well, just watch. See those who say, who, you see those who may be unaware of some narrations while you are unaware of them. You people are the most knowledgeable among the people of Hadith of the Prophet Okay. So he says, you of all people should know I'm not Dajjal. Okay. Because what the pro you know what the Prophet taught you about Dajjal. He taught you know what he taught you. You are the most knowledgeable among the people of Hadith of the Messenger of Allah. O Abu O, o people of Ansar. Did not the Messenger of Allah say that he's a disbeliever while I'm a Muslim, he said? Did not the Messenger of Allah say that he's sterile while as I have children? While I have left children behind in Medina? Did not the Messenger of Allah say that he will neither enter Mecca nor uh, Medina are, are not lawful for him? And am I not amongst the inhabitants of Medina and who is accompanying you now to Mecca? Alam? يَقُولُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ لَا إِلَّا إِلَّا يَدْخُلُوا أَوْ لَا تَحِلُّ لَهُ مَكَّةً مَكَّةً إِذْ نَحَلَ أَوْلَمْ أَوْ مَدِينَةً أَلَسْتُمْ مِنْ أَحْلِ الْمَدِينَةِ Am I not the people of Medina? وَأَنْطِلُقُوا مَعَكَ إِلَى الْمَكَّةِ And I'm going with, I'm one of the people that are going now with you to Mecca. So how can I be the judge? فَوَاللَّهِ مَا زَالَ He's the companion of the Prophet says, perhaps I, 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 he has been falsely accused. He thought maybe he's been falsely accused. Then he said his final statement, the punchline. Abu Sa'id, he said, I can inform you of some information that is true. I can tell you something that's true. Wallahi, I know him, meaning the judge. I know his father and I know where he is at this time in the land. So I said, may the rest of your day be put to grief because you have some connection with him. You are either him with him in the a'rafahu wa'arafu waladahu wa'arafu ayna huwa sa'ata. I know where he is right now and I know his father and I know him. Okay, sa'ata min al ard I know where he is, which his time that he is at the, this time. I know, this is actually an interesting statement. I know, min al -ard. I know his hour in the earth, could be one translation, or I know his hour from the earth. Okay, so, and then the companion of the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, May your hands be cut off, you can say, for the rest of the day. Okay, may the rest of your day be put to grief. The same, so now, here you have different faces of the jab. So don't be necessarily be looking for just a blind man. No. The other thing that you must be careful of, that he has a connection with someone who was in Medina. Ibn Sayyad. He has a connection with him. Or he is him. Because there are narrations that Imam Ibn Hajar has written about him entering into Asfahan, where the Jews were waiting for him, and he's vanished since that time. And so he was a Muslim, according to some muhaddis, and he was a Muslim. He was a Muslim. But one day, because people used to blame him that, hey, the Prophet was worried, but this guy is the general not. And he said one day, one day he said, according to the narrations of Hadith, he said that if I was be I was to become the Jal, if I was to be given the powers of the Jal, I wouldn't mind. It's okay. So some some muhaddisin said, and some of the fuqaha they said that when he made this statement, he became kafir, meaning he accepted the fact that he would rather be the jal than be Muslim. Okay. So then he became kafir. So he was a Muslim. Then he became a kafir, and he accepts Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam according to many narrations as a prophet of Allah and the Arabs. Okay, and. And uh, this is also interesting because those of you people who may, may be 
and listening to my previous talks, I talk about how the Jews were waiting on a prophet or a messiah that would come and help them defeat the Arabs. One of the questions that, you know, that uh, that uh, the, that uh, Tamim al that Tamim al reports uh, about his conversation with is that has a prophet come that's going to uh, conquer the Arabs. So this is also there mentioned there, just as a side point. But the point I'm making here is that this Dajjal, how will he be able to fool people? See, this is also part of the confusion. Is it is it Ibn Sayyad? Is it is it the person that we know in the hadith of the the people that went on the ship and saw Jassasa and then saw Dajjal, or is it the Ibn Sayyad? Ibn Sayyad, or is it this one-eyed man? It's it's deception from the beginning. It's confusing from the beginning. And you have to see, if you're a mu'min, you have to see through this confusion into what are the linking points, what is the common points, so you can actually see who he is and what he does and what he wants. Okay? Now, important point. He is somebody that is from Medina. He's connected to, he was connected to at least Ibn Sayyid. <laughs> and Ibn Sayyid used to talk to him, at least we feel that way. And uh, he used to communicate with him. And he got the information. And he knew the Sahaba. He knew their Iman. He knew the Islam. He knew so much. Okay? He knew so much. And he knew so much of every Prophet. So when he comes, the reason he'll be able to fool people is because he knows how each group thinks. He knows how the Muslims think. He had a connection to Medina. He knows how every prophet warned about every. He was he was aware of the coming of the prophets, because why? Because when the thirty people went on the boat, okay, they didn't act like this is the first time somebody came. No. It seems like you know he said, "Hey, there's a man waiting for you." Okay, this was like not the first time this happened, but Allah wa'ad. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is the reason he will be able to fool everyone is that he understands everyone. He understands the Muslim mind. He understands the Jewish mind. And he understands the Christian mind. And with Jassasa, spying, see that animal that is with him? It's able to tell him this is Muslim, this is Jew. This is Christian. And now you got this technology that's spying on you. And he can deliver a message specific, specific to you. That will make you think he's telling the truth. A Christian may hear a different message. A Jewish person with his Facebook information will hear a different message. A Muslim will hear a different message. An atheist will hear a different message. Everyone will hear what? He knows or what he thinks that they need to hear. And he will confuse the people. And he will be the jal. He will confuse the people. Okay? And so this is a very, very important point that the relationship between the jal, deception, and jasasa, deception, and spying, is that by spying, you can deceive the people. Okay? And he has the knowledge of the prophets. He has the knowledge of the Sahaba. And he is able to deliver the message. He will show the Jewish people he is a Jewish prophet. And he will show the Muslims that he is a Muslim prophet. And he will show the Christians that he is Jesus Christ, that he is their, their Messiah. And he will show every because when you are connected to the modern day technology, we already have the technology to figure out via Facebook, via Google, via your emails, via your texts, what what mindset you have. Even within Muslims, they will be able to tell you this is the radical Muslim, this is the fundamentalist Muslim, this is the moderate Muslim, this is the secular Muslim. Every, every the message of the gel will be catered to everyone according to their mindset. It's just like what politicians do to get elected today, okay? They know if you're visiting certain websites, okay? They know what to say in these states and these people and what to say to these people, what to say to that people and how to cater a message to a people to convince them. So every, the people in the Muslim world will listen to his message and be convinced, oh, he's 
probably the Messiah. He knows the Quran really well. And the Christians will be like, oh, he seems to know the Bible really well. He seems to be the Messiah. The Jewish people will be like, he knows the Torah and the Zuhar and the Talmud really well. Wow, he is maybe a messenger, really the Messiah. And then he will do things and control things and show miracles and do miracles, right? <coughs> that will fool the people that he is the Messiah. See, but this key component is that technology had to reach to a point where deception can be at its best. Technology and magic. Technology and magic have to reach to a point where deception can be so individualized to you. Like the hadith that where the man says, the jal says to the man, look, I'll bring your parents to life. I'll bring your, this individual. It will be a message that will even be specific to individuals where they will see miracles with the spying ability, the magic ability, the science ability, and he will give everyone the message according to what he knows of their psyche, what he knows of the religion that they already have, according to the belief system that he, they already have, he will give a message according to that. And with the modern technology, with the mo modern spying ability, that this person is this and this person is this and this person is this and think of the Chinese the Chinese uh, social system that they have where they say oh you're a good citizen not bad a citizen you know if you do these things you're not a good citizen he will cater every he will fool everyone at a personal level because the messages will be delivered according to what they know about you through technology and spying and your behavior and which mosque you go to and so on and so forth. So this is very much possible. It is, so now I've given you three paces of Dujjah, okay? The blind man born in a Jewish house, the man that is well built and chained up and he will come out at the right time. And Ibn been Sayyid who became like the Imam, the, the Imam of, he went to Asfahan or to Yehudiyah and he became invisible there. The companions of the Prophet never saw him after that. You know, the, uh, there was a ceremony of him arriving. This is a longer story I'll get into later. But you know, he, the Jewish people took him in and he became their leader. And, uh, so now you are in a situation where there's more than one face of the Jad. And the Jal has the power to cater his message specifically to fool me. He knows the right things to say to me to fool me. And the right things to say to you to fool you. Unless you have a very, very special basira. So may Allah give us that very, 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 very special basira. Ameen, Allahumma ameen, kareem, ya Rabb. إن شاء الله أن هي أقول قولي هذا استغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات